Hi everyone, in this video we're going to be spending the whole day at Rain and Marshes. It's about an hour after dawn and I'm going to walk along the seawall, see what I can find before going into the reserve proper. Last time I was here it was end of January, mid-February, something like that. And of course I had all the winter ducks and winter visitors, but most of them will have probably gone by now. But in their place I should have lots of spring arrivals. I've seen on the Facebook page there's been lots of warblers and stuff like that showing up and there's also been some rare passage migrants like ring seems. seen. So fingers crossed I should see some good stuff today. Well walking along the sea wall it's just masses of singing birds, white throats, black caps, all the birds have arrived but none of them are showing or keeping their heads down possibly because it's a bit too windy today but I'll keep on it and see what I can get. I did eventually get some white throats singing. And this goldfinch posed nicely for a bit. A bit further along, some linnets were feeding on the path. I felt got very close to this goldfinch. And the second in it was having a good preen. Well, I've come right on top of the old tip here. As I've heard, there's some corn buntings up here, and I have heard them singing, but I haven't actually managed to get any on film yet. I then spotted one on the fence, but I couldn't get one on camera singing. But there's a wonderful view from up here of the Thames and the marshes themselves. And it's something I've not actually done before, I'm ashamed to say. So yeah, I'll definitely be walking up here again. Heading back down, I stopped at the Surrey Mound and managed this brief clip of Jif Jaff. Walking back along the path to the sea wall, I came across this linnet that was singing. Another was preening in a hedge nearby. Before it started singing too. And then a third linnet that was even closer started to sing as well. As always, it was a battle to get good audio over the A13 and the planes flying over. This distant reed bunting didn't join in with the singing though. Well, somewhere out there behind me is a grasshopper warbler because I keep hearing it calling, but I can't see it. Walking along the sea wall here, I spotted a little group of photographers looking at something and it was this lovely wheat here. These wheat ears are migrants on their way north from Africa and have stopped off to feed and fuel up, eating the invertebrates they find here on the salt marsh and the grassland in front of the sea wall. This one is a male with its black mask around the eye. They infamously get their name from their white rump, which you can see as they fly off, with wheat ear actually derived from the words white arse. I got very lucky with this one as it sat up in a bush before flying off and landing pretty close to me. Then very close. I left the wheat ear to it and carried on along the sea wall. I saw some terns out over the Thames. I'm going to wimp out on saying whether they're common or arctic. Let me know in the comments if you're feeling more confident than me. Well, I got back to the centre and I ran into Ben, who you can see next to me here. Hello. And he's like one of the best birders I know. So I tagged along with him and went back along the sea wall and we found the wheat ears again. And we managed to actually see the grasshopper warbler. It wasn't singing for us, but I got these close ups. Although it was partly obscured, this is still my best ever footage of one.
At the usual spot near the Martian Discovery Zone, there was a marsh frog, but as usual it wasn't calling for me. Walking along the path, I just had some good insects. I had a brimstone that actually sat for me on two flowers. So as you can see, I've got some nice close-ups of it. These classic spring butterflies are notorious for not sitting still for long, but, th but this one was busy feeding on the many small florets that make up the compound flower of a dandelion. So it was sitting quite nicely, and I was able to get a few different angles and some nice close-up. It even posed on a second flower for some more footage. And I also found my first damselfly of the year, this lovely female large red damselfly. This species is often the first species to be seen each year, and this one was joined by a fly that was lucky the damselfly wasn't hungry, as it was small enough to be lunch. Ben went to look for the garden warbler, and I was helping him look until I got a bit distracted by this bee fly. These insects use their long mouth parts to reach into flowers without having to land, as it's doing here on the flowers on this hawthorn or mayflower bush. These always look great when filmed in slow-mo. I've slowed this footage down to one tenth of real speed here. We've now come into the cordite store. We did have a little look around the boulders for a garden warbler, but we couldn't see it. So we're going to see what invertebrates we can find in here. And I might go and see if I can film that chiff chaff. I can hear singing. I did manage to get the chiff chaff. There were lots of insects around, like this dock bug basking in the sun. And there was this tortoise beetle, so called because it retracts its head and legs in when not moving around. Pretty sure this is a green tortoise beetle, but there are a few similar species, none of which I see very often, so it was good to find this one. This hairy shell bug was minding its own business when this weevil took off and landed on it. Before quickly jumping off after realizing its mistake. One of the tortoise beetles became active and started moving around. Whenever you get a nettle bed, you'll get this species, the nursery web spider. There are a couple of cinnamon bugs around too, including a couple of mating pairs. Well, that was really cool. Ben decided to take us up to this little viewpoint and we we're looking at some curlew and then he spotted a fence post jumping spider, which is a giant, well, for jumping spiders, it's only about a centimetre long. And as luck would have it, I decided to leave my probe lens in the bag today. So I've got that out and this is what I filmed. These spiders are one of the more striking jumping spiders and a favourite among photographers. They have very good vision and I think it saw its reflection in my lens as it started walking towards it. It wandered back under the cover of the leaf where I managed to film some nice shots of it. Well, normally when I come to Raynham, my first stop is the Perflute Hide, and it's mid-afternoon and I haven't even been in there yet, so let's go and see what we can see from the hide. Pretty close in was this male gadwall, and a female feeding nearby. The water level on the scrape is so high, a pair of great twisted greaves had set up home, and they were building a nest, bringing in material for it, before one decided to sit on it. They quickly did the deed, and I thought I was finally going to get to film their famous mating dance. But all I got was this head shaking. The greaves then moved off to the rebed. Well, they were collecting material, but not taking it back to the first nest, but seemed to be building a second one. These are floating nests, as great crested greaves have their legs so far back on their body, they struggle to move about on land. I watched them do this for a while, then I tried to film the lapwings that were wheeling around over the scrape every so often, and I managed to get this footage, which I'm reasonably happy with.
A mute swan then appeared, not far from the nest building Greaves, followed by its mate. But the Greaves carried on regardless. Some little Greaves are active in front of the hide. This one came out with a fish. The red colour shows that it's a male free spine stickleback. These fish have three spines they can lock upright when threatened, and as a result, this poor little grebe, not a very big bird, was struggling to get it down its throat. It was thrashing it around so much, it half removed the fish's head, but still couldn't get it down. But after lots of struggling, it finally managed to do so. Well, drifting out of my shot, of course. These coots were being their usual aggressive selves, and even broke into a fight at one point. and I spotted a red shank feeding on the shore. Looking back over at the great crested greaves, they had gone back to the first nest again, and I saw one manage to catch a fish, before I decided to move on and try elsewhere. Well, that was a quite productive second half of the afternoon in Perfleet Hyde, I think you'll agree. I'm now walking down the path to the turnstile, and I'm gonna head back up to where that grasshopper warbler was and see if it comes out in the evening. Sometimes these birds do, sometimes they don't. There's only one way to find out. I walked down the seawall to where I'd seen the grasshopper warbler earlier. On the way, I spotted a wheat here, but it was far too windy to do any filming, so I actually got a few stills. As you can see here, got a few nice shots. Then I got down to where the grasshopper warbler was. There were a couple of people waiting, they hadn't seen it. And then just as I was about to give up, we did glimpse it in the bush, but it wasn't much of a view. I've now just walked back down the seawall. The sun is setting, it's pretty much dusk now, but. I did see a weed here again, and I got some video this time because the wind was a bit calmer. It set up nicely on the driftwood, though there was still a bit of camera shake from the wind, even in this relatively sheltered spot. And my last sighting of the day was this shell duck, skimming the top layer of mud looking for invertebrates to eat in the evening sun. But you probably see I'm a little bit windswept. Got an achy back, but I've had a good day out. A much needed good day out. Thanks for watching.